This is a basic introduction to JSON-LD. JSON-LD stands for JavaScript Object Notation for Linking Data. So you may have heard of JSON before because JSON is basically what we use to transmit data back and forth between websites uh, and, and browsers. Linked data is a fairly new term. Linked data is basically a way of publishing data on the web such that it's interconnected between different websites. So one website can refer to data on another website. Right? So JSON-LD is an extension to JSON and it's most useful for people that are web developers or designers or anyone that transmits uh, information back and forth between uh, web browsers and uh, web servers. Now, as I said, this is a fairly basic introduction, so uh, most people that are familiar with kind of the web and, and using a browser should be able to uh, follow along uh, in this tutorial. Now, before we get into how JSON-LD works or what it does, we need to think about how the web works today. Right? Today we have what's called a document-based web. We have HTML documents that are sitting out there on web servers uh, that we can use to display images, we can display video and audio, uh, we can have text, and we have this great little uh, tool called a hyperlink uh, to link from one document to another document. So we can go from something that we're reading here and then follow whatever we're interested in to another website. And we can also have multiple links coming into our website uh, from the outside world. So websites are really broken into two uh, parts. There's the front end, which is basically uh, where we see all the HTML kind of coming into play. So whatever we see on the web is typically HTML and JavaScript, uh, and that's really meant for humans. There's another side of, uh, of the website which is meant mainly for uh, computers, and that's usually serving up data in the form of JSON. Now JSON, which stands for uh, the JavaScript Object Notation, is a way of expressing data. It's both human readable and machine readable. It's, it's just kind of really simple uh, property value type uh, format. So JSON's really easy for uh, both uh, computers to read and uh, web developers to read. HTML is meant for uh, other people that are viewing the site. Um, typically all you see is the HTML. You don't see the JSON uh, coming, uh, coming in. Um, so when we talk about linked data, what we're talking about, like I said, was uh, we want data to be linked between multiple websites. So if you imagine these green little dotted lines are the borders between websites. So this is one website, this is another website, and this is yet another website. Uh, this data needs to reference data on another website. And the way it does it through linked data is it does it through links, the same way as the document-based web uh, does it. So Basically, linked data is a way of, of publishing your data so that people can reuse it. And so your data joins all the other data on the web, and it and it's becomes more useful uh, to society uh, as a whole. Now, we've figured out how to publish data in HTML. Right? So we use a technology called RDFA to publish data. And RDFA is basically a way of tagging the bits of the web pages that we think are important for things like search engines and uh, social networking sites uh, and things of that nature. So while people uh, see the HTML pages and they can read the text and look at the pictures, computers see something very different. They see the data that's embedded in the web page. Now while this is a solved problem for HTML, we haven't really figured out how to do it uh, in a standard way for JSON. Right. And so that's kind of where JSON-LD comes in. It proposes a standard way of expressing linked data uh, in JSON. Now, if we go back and we think about how we interact with websites, how uh, data is served from websites, typically you, you get a web page, the JavaScript goes out to the website and requests data. The data is transmitted as JSON. And as I said before, the JSON is really simple key value pairs, right? I mean, you can kind of look at this and figure out kind of what's, what's going on. So the type is person, the name of this person is Bob, Bob's homepage is this URL. And so so JSON is, is really good at being both human readable and easily parsable by machines. 
The problem, though, is what happens when you start getting this data from multiple different websites, right? So let's say you've got one website, another website, another website, all, all throwing data at you. You don't really know if each one of these websites is using name in the same exact way or using type in the same exact way. Right, so there's the, the big problem when you start trying to mix and match JSON data is that there's an ambiguity problem. Right, so let's look at this example to kind of show, uh, demonstrate the ambiguity problem. So let's say that this is data that one website served you and this is data that another website served you. One of them says the name is Bob, the other one says this name is something that looks like a login name, but the home page is the same for both of them. So if we think about this, this data is probably related in some way, but we don't really know how, how it's related. Right? So in this case, the developer probably means name is like the person's first name. In this case, the developer probably means name is like the, the login name or the user, user login name. So we need to figure out a way to get rid of this ambiguity if we're going to be able to share data between multiple different websites. Now, we can do that using what we've always done on the web, which is using URLs to specify and be very specific about what we're talking about. Right, so instead of just saying name, we could give the, the property an entire URL to identify the property. So when we say we are talking about this type of name, then everyone knows, oh, then we're talking about a first name. Or this type of home page, then we mean the person's home page. Right? Now the problem with this is that it's really, really verbose. No developer would ever want to develop with this kind of uh, complexity. What you ideally you want to do is you want to just use terms simple terms like that. Right? And so we want to be specific, but we also want to be very concise with the JSON code that we're writing. So this is where JSON-LD comes in. JSON-LD uh, introduces this very simple con concept. It's called the context. And what the context does is it tells the application how to interpret the rest of the data in the document. So in JSON-LD, you say, my context is, and then you give it a URL to a document somewhere out, in, out on the web. And this document tells you exactly what name is, exactly what home page is. Right? Not only does the JSON-LD context tell you exactly what these properties are, it also tells you what type of data should be associated with them. So should it be a string, or should it be a date, or should it be a number, or should it be a URL? Right? So the most fundamental concept to JSON-LD is this idea of giving your data context. Now if you zoom out for a second and, and, and think about how we communicate as human beings. Almost every conversation that we have uh, has some kind of context associated with it. There's an environment, there's a situation in which the, con the conversation is taking place. And when we say, when we use words like, oh, I just saw Bob the other day, the person that you're speaking with has context. They know that Bob is shorthand for that person that both of you know, right? So you're, you can be concise in the words that you're saying to who you're conversing with, but very specific at the same time um, of, of who you're talking, with, uh, talking about. So the JSON-LD context basically gives context to your JSON data. Now, another really useful feature uh, with JSON-LD is that it allows you to identify these objects, right? So not only is it important to just use very concise terminology uh, when you're expressing data, but it also helps that when you're talking about someone like Bob, that you can identify them. And, that, and when anybody else wants to talk about Bob, that they use Bob's identifier. So we use URLs to identify things uh, in JSON-LD. And the way we do that is we use this handy ID keyword. So the context tells us how to interpret name and home page and the data that goes, goes along with uh, name and home page. And ID says this is this data's universal identifier on the web. So if other people want to talk about Bob, they can use Bob's URL and make statements, other statements like Bob's age or Bob's current mood or uh, Bob's hometown. So 
there are three things really that you want to keep in mind that JSON-LD does. One, it gives your document context. Two, it makes it really easy for you to use short terminology in your, in your document. And three, it allows you to give your data an identifier. And those things are the foundational layers of linked data. Now, there's much more to JSON-LD. Uh, for example, uh, you can uh, give your objects a type. So you can tell the application I'm talking about a person or a place or a recipe uh, or an event. Uh, you can use different languages. So if you wanted to express uh, someone's name in Japanese or uh, Mandarin or uh, Spanish or French, uh, you could use language tags to do that. You can be very specific about certain types of values. You can say this is definitely a date or this is a time or this is a unit of measure. Um, you can convert this uh, the JSON-LD to something called RDF, which is one of the fundamental uh, uh, models uh, that, that we use to model linked data. And there are other features like being able to reshape the data, uh, something called compaction and expansion and framing that allow you to modify JSON-LD documents to make it easier for your application uh, to use that data. So this tutorial is just the tip of the iceberg. There's much more uh, that you can learn. Uh, just search for uh, JSON-LD and advanced concepts, um, and you should be able to come across those. So if you'd like to find out a bit more about uh, JSON-LD, or maybe even play around with the uh, markup, uh, you can go to json-ld.org. Uh, this site uh, has a bunch of uh, good starting tutorials, and it also has something called a playground. So it's a live JSON-LD editor that allows you to kind of mark up data and play around with it, and it'll show you uh, whether or not your markup's correct, and it'll show you the type of data that you're expressing. Um, if you're interested in expressing linked data in HTML, there's another site called rdfa.info, and uh, that also has uh, tutorials and, and just kind of primers on, on getting started with RDFA, and it also has a playground that allows you to put in HTML markup, add RDFA uh, markup to that HTML, and express linked data. So if you want to express linked data in JSON, go here. If you want to express linked data in HTML, go here. This uh, entire tutorial has been released under a Creative Commons attribute share-like license. That means that you're free to copy and modify uh, the video. You can share it with your friends or repost it on the website without asking permission. Uh, if you have any questions about linked data or JSON or JSON-LD, uh, please hit me up on Twitter. Uh, that's my Twitter handle there. And I'm on Google Plus as Manu Sporni. I hope you enjoyed this introduction, and uh, please search for uh, more JSON-LD tutorials that will be per, uh, uploaded in the next couple of weeks. Thanks.